Joining us now from the RNC uh, by phone is Sean Spicer. Sean, I, I, we wanted to ask you also about uh, the immigration issue and, and Boehner's refusal. Doesn't that hurt Republicans going forward to be seen, at least, as blocking any progress on immigration? It's been a year since the Senate passed the bill and the House has refused to put it on the floor. Right. Well, I think it's a false choice to assume that just because the Senate passed something, we have to do with it. The House has made it very clear that we need to do this right, and that means doing it in a way that ensures that we secure the border first and, and, um, and then take this up in a way that is, ensures that we, we reform the immigration process and we don't find ourselves back here uh, 15 or 20 years later with the same problem as we did when we tried to reform this in the 80s. Uh, at, at this stage also, uh, when we, we look at immigration, though, time is running out. If they don't do something in the next couple of weeks, there won't be time this year, there won't be time really uh, effectively before the next election. Well, look, Andrew, we rushed through Obamacare and we told people you had to read the bill uh, or, or pass it to read the bill, and look where that got us. Um, and I think that what the House is doing is doing this in a way that ensures that it is done right that we, do, that we do it in a way that ensures that the border is secure, that we don't pass something and then find out that that just ensures that a flood of uh, additional uh, uh, folks come across the border and we end ourselves with a bigger problem. So I, I don't think that this time it should be the, the judge on, on how we get this done. It's got to be done right and done in an incremental way that ensures that we actually reform the broken immigration process that we have. Uh, I also wanted to break up the whole, bring up the whole subject of climate change, climate change deniers. Uh, Tom Snyder, the Democratic activist, liberal activist, weighing in with $50 million and targeting primaries. Uh, Sean, what is the reaction from you guys? You've got the Koch brothers, they've got Tom Steyer. What difference does it make, I guess? Well, I mean, the difference, the, well, the one actual from a political sense difference that I would, I would argue is that what, what uh, the Koch brothers are out there doing with their thing is talking about policies that actually matter to folks. So whether it's health care or the economy, those are the issues that come up, number one, number two, on, on, um, on when, when people are asked what's going to influence their vote this year. The recent poll that came out from Politico last year that says that nine out of ten respondents said that health care and Obamacare would be important to determine your vote. Uh, including 49% of those folks who said that it would be number one, uh, the number one reason that they vote. When you look at issues that Tom Steyer is trying to promote and drag the, the, the Democratic Party very, very uh, to the left, uh, environment comes in at 2% in the battleground poll. So, I mean, he's out there trying to get, you know, claim, claim uh, hold of, of the Democratic Party with all of his money. But frankly, I think in terms of an issue that matters to what voters are going to look at this November, uh, I, I think it's a non-starter. Near a tandem? I, I would say there are many differences between Tom Steyer and the Koch brothers. Tom Steyer is actually saying what he's doing, what he's going to spend his money on. He has a cause that he's not invested in, that he doesn't make a lot of money on. The Koch brothers are heavily invested in the decisions that they're fighting around energy. They're promoting an oil agenda that they've invested in. So there are many differences. But on the issue of support, you know, this issue of climate is a growing issue. Look at Marco Rubio, how he's been flummoxed by basic climate denial. I think this is going to be a big challenge for Republicans going forward, making them sound like they're really kowtowing to an extreme base when you can't acknowledge that climate has been a big problem. California is seemingly on fire right now, and we can't have Marco Rubio explain that climate denial is a real issue. That so climate is a real issue. All, but, but, but here's the thing. For all the challenges that we face, at the end of the day, uh, political parties are judged by whether or not they're winning or losing. And the NRCC, the sister committee that oversees House races, just announced a drive for 245. We have 100, 233 seats right now. They're going to push to get as many as 245. On the Senate side, where we're down six to take control, every day it seems like another state, whether it's Minnesota, Virginia, Oregon, Michigan, New Hampshire, Colorado, continues to come online as an expanded opportunity for the Republicans to pick up more and more seats. But conversely, there's not one call, one state or one district where the Democrats are adding a state offensively. They continue to play defense. So I appreciate being told what the challenges of our party are, but the reality is, is that every day our party is advancing the ability to pick up more seats in the House and the Senate, um, and it's not the Democrats who are doing well. So it, I, I, instead but, but, of pointing out the challenges that our party I faces, think, I think they might want to figure out how they hold. I think we're going to have to bring you back, and we're going to bring you on set because I, I know you, the, the RNC camera didn't quite kick in the way we wanted.
done. So come back next I week. Think, I yeah, hope. I think actually it was, it, was on, uh, it was on the other end that we had the problem. We, we were working really well. Uh, okay, that's not what I was told, but I will get into this, believe me. Uh, to be continued in any case. And one quick uh, ad here is that the State Department has now said that Secretary Kerry will testify before the ISA committee, not the Select Committee. So he's choosing committees. He'll go to one place, not the other, but he will not be going to testify before that select committee, but he will appear before Daryl Issa. Uh, meanwhile, thank you very much, Neera Tannen, and thank you, Sean Spicer.